The Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN has warned that conventional weapons, landmines, and improvised explosive devices leach heavy metals into the soil. Arms exports and the global climate breakdown. What is the connection? Those two things don't have anything to do with each other. Right? <laughs> so I first wanted to point out that uh, this is coming from a, an organization called Declassified UK, which they do really fucking cool work. And that this is yes, specifically is. talking about the UK. Now, if we were to look at the UK's weapons exports, uh, Compared to the U.S., whoa, Nelly! I mean, wow. The compare. I mean, there really isn't a comparison. If we're, if, if I'm being honest. Uh, so I actually had. I'm sorry, I didn't send it to you. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, let me just hold on. What is happening? I'm sorry, I didn't send it to you. But I, there was. A... Uh, listen, folks, don't go hard on us. Our producer. Um, it's, Sucks. it's actually really sad. Uh, he, oh. um, Oops. is a loser <laughs> and didn't do shit. Okay. I just sent it to you. Just kidding. There's no producer. No. So yeah. And I said, whoa, Nelly, I'm standing by that. Uh, You're sticking with whoa, Nelly? I'm fucking, I'm, you know really? what? I'm fucking sticking with whoa, Nelly. I'd like to know the etymology of that phrase though. Okay. So that's so weird. I wouldn't just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. I don't care. It's okay. so weird. I don't care. Uh, so the, again, this article is about the UK, which is despicable that they've, for instance, just exported a bunch of fucking ur depleted I are, uranium. I already have this one. Oh, you do? I had it up. Oh, well then I am on top of it. Except for taking three minutes to send me something I already had. <laughs> you should have looked over my shoulder and known that you already had it and uh -huh. said so. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, let's go down. Uh, I'll work on that. You talk. Okay. So, yes, this one. Uh, so, basically, the uh, the UK, compared to the US in terms of arms exports, you can see here the United States, for folks not watching this right now, there is a circle. P and Picture a pie if one guy ate the middle, okay, but then he up. spit up a little shut bit, he it, like just a little on the corner. Okay. Are you done? Okay, I'm done. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so there's a circle and 40% of it is the United States. That is the global share of exports of major arms. And the UK is this little, it's 3.2%. Is this little sliver? <laughs> baby, baby, baby sliver. Now, according to this most recent report. 40% is the US. I know. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Uh now, according to this most recent report by Declassified UK, they're they're counting it slightly differently because of a bunch of um, uh, collaborative efforts, one might say, with other European nations that has pushed the UK's ranking higher uh, than it looks in that pie chart. But I also just wanted to point that out because the comparison is pretty fucking remarkable. Uh, so the UK is ranked second in terms of uh, arms exports, and that's what the also kind of hilarious to point out here is China is five percent, while we hear that China is this massive global threat. They're going after everyone. They're going to kill you. They're going to kill your dog. They're going to kill your dog's best friend. Like that's what we hear constantly. And yet China is five percent, a tiny again, a tiny sliver compared to the United States at 40%. And on top of that, China has one military base outside of China. The United States has roughly 800. But anyway. So again, the uh, the latest figures to, um, uh, so according to this graph, which is the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute ranks the UK as the sixth biggest major arms exporter. Others rank them as second because Again, they're called collaborative projects between the UK and some other European partners. Either way, they fucking export a lot. But again, nowhere near what the US does. And this article by Declassified UK shows that even just the UK exports, uh, even just the UK exports are fueling a global climate breakdown. And that's just, again, looking at the UK. 
Uh, now the um, uh, the most vulnerable countries that this report found are Pakistan and Bangladesh, uh, to which the UK has approved military export licenses worth over seven hundred and fifty million dollars since two thousand eight. Um, armed conflict already affects 40% of the 40 most vulnerable countries in the world, according to the Geneva Academy. And as the climate crisis wor worsens, the UK is exporting more weapons than ever. Uh, so basically, there's a correlation between the rise in climate chaos and the rise in armed conflict. Armed conflict, which is being supported and fueled by arms exports by the, the global north, such as the UK, and as I pointed out, more so the United States, uh, which for only, of course, further destabilizes these countries because what they really need is support in infrastructure and support in services. You cannot float down a fucking river on an AR-15, okay? You cannot you survive tie drought. Them all together, like a bunch of them. I'd like to tie a bunch of fucking politicians together and sail them down the river, but... Um, I lost my train. You cannot eat an AK-47. You cannot float down That's a true. river on an AK-47. That, that is true. That was your train of thought, I think. Yes, I think I said AR-15, but I see your point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to add here that, like, th this seems like, a, you know, something people don't think about, like, oh, there's a connection between arms trade and arms exports and, and global climate violence. And it's like, yeah, of fucking course. Sending a bunch of large military weaponry to places that are struggling because of the climate crisis ends in larger violence. It'd be like if you have a neighborhood where it's really not going well and the people are really struggling and they're really having a hard time in about 15 different ways, and then you send them all guns. It's like, and before that, they didn't have guns. It's like, odds are you're going to end up with some violence eventually if shit's going that bad. Doesn't matter what type of person it is. They all have guns. Shit's getting really bad. Then gun violence. However, when you have a neighborhood where shit's getting really bad and everybody is not armed to the teeth, less likely you're going to see a lot of gun violence. <laughs> well, and that there's when they, there's also uh, there's some kind of infrastructure in place or systems in place to help people. Yeah. So, and this is, I mean, the, this article is fo focusing mostly on the 40 nations that are most climate vulnerable and how the UK has exported military equipment to them since 2008, which is just like a stunning list, uh, stunning in a bad way, not like, oh, beautiful, uh, you know, just absolutely despicable numbers, like $36 million of weapon or pounds of weapons, pounds as in the money, not like caring um <laughs> well i mean who the fuck names oh, their you, currency you, pounds it's uh, annoying uh yeah you, you have to say pound sterling pound sterling yeah whatever fuck it um which by the way was also the name of my teacher when i went to school in london his name was pound sterling okay uh 36 million dollar pounds to somalia uh you know 40 million pounds to madagascar and these are among the 40 most climate vulnerable countries. But it doesn't just affect these nations, as this article points out as well. For instance, uh, when the UK sent a one billion pounds sterling military aid package to Ukraine, they shifted money from the climate finance budget in order to do so. So they, th this is, of course, because you have to get it there from fucking go. somewhere, right? They found the money in they the climate the budget money. to send. So they do know there's a connection between arms and climate crisis. <laughs> They're taking the climate crisis money, right. using it to buy weapons. Right. And of course, there's the direct effect uh, that weapons have on the environment. For instance, uh, from the extraction of raw materials through uh, to production by arms companies. They're used by armed forces, decommissioning and end of life disposal. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN has warned that conventional weapons, landmines and improvised explosive devices leach heavy metals into the soil. And the manufacturing and testing of weapons are also responsible for soil pollution. And lest we forget, the UK just sent a bunch of fucking depleted uranium shells to Ukraine, which are filled with anybody? A depleted uranium, which of course then fucking leaches in to groundwater soil, 
Uh, and we have, we have, uh, we already know what happens to people who come into contact with that. They fucking die, excruciating deaths from cancer and things like that. So on many different levels, this is a horrific, uh, this is a horrific correlation between arms exports and climate chaos. And uh, let's see, where's that one? What one? Uh, I wanted to show the various, uh, this chart, which uh, if you'd like to describe in terms of pie shape, um, you know what? I'll, I'll let you. Uh, th this chart. You can click on it to get the full size. You can click on it. That's what. Never mind. <laughs> no, I can't wait. Oh, there we go. Uh, it's showing the different weapons contractors and how much they, they contribute. contribute to the, which sounds like a positive. I know. I hate how that much word. They, how much rot they contribute to our society. Anyway, by far in the lead is Lockheed uh, Martin. Then Raytheon, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, General Dynamics, BAE Systems, which is a British co British company, Norinco, Avic, but really the vast majority of these sales are like the for top six companies: Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, and General Dynamics. And they are, in many ways, uh, the companies that own our American politicians at least in uh, decisions on war and peace, which is not, there are no decisions on peace. It's just all war. Mm -hmm. So anyway, thought thought we should show you who the culprits are. Name the names. Yeah. These are the motherfuckers that are war profiteers, which should always be illegal, war profiteering. Well, as should war, but here we are. But here we are. <laughs>